Um, this particular lecture is about uh, risk in business and the, the title of the lecture is uh, Risky Business. Really what I want to do here is to give you an impression of the importance of risk in the everyday operations of a business and why as managers, as leaders, you need to be aware of the types of risk a business faces. You need to be aware of how to measure that risk and finally how to manage that risk. Now in this introductory lecture, I'm just going to spend some time talking about the types of risk that a business might face. And in your studies over the next few years, you'll be able to go into this area in a lot more detail. Whether you study marketing or whether you study HRM or accounting or finance or international business, risk is a part of what we do in business and uh, you have to become very comfortable with the concept of risk. So what is risk? If you read the news uh, in any media outlet or listen to the news on radio or watch it on TV, you hear the word risk used all the time. People say there's a, the, there's a risk of a major snowstorm. Um, we can also talk about uh, health risks. We can talk about the risk to the economy. Now, what do we mean by risk? Well, in actual fact, risk is a very general term. And what, what we tend to mean by risk is that uh, it's uncertainty. Uncertainty, and in a lot of people's mind, it's, it's not just uncertainty that captures both upside risk and downside risk. In a lot of people's minds, when we talk about risk, we just talk about downside risk. The risk or the chance or the probability that something bad will happen to us. And in business, we actually think in those terms. If we think about the banking sector, when we talk about bank risk, the concern that regulators have and investors have is the risk or the chance that you will lose money. You don't, never, or you rarely do you talk about the risk or the chance that you'll gain money. That's not what we mean, or that's what we generally mean by risk. It's always on the downside. And as managers, it's up to you to make sure that you know what those factors are that cause reductions in value, reductions in cash flow. And it's up to you to be able to measure those and it's up to you to be able to manage those. So when we think about risk, we, th we have to think about risk in three different dimensions. We need to think about the range of outcomes uh, that may occur from a particular risk factor. So if we talk about, for example, reputational risk, the risk that something happens that affects your reputation, that affects the value of your company. This might be a very bad marketing campaign. It might be your employment practices. It might be the, the goods that you're selling. A very recent case is the case of horse meat in uh, foods. Those companies that used meats that had horse meat have a massive reputational risk. And it's anticipated that a lot of these companies that were at the source of the horse meat contamination may actually cease to exist in the next few months because of uh, the, f the impact that their reputation has uh, been damaged from the particular horse meat uh, scandal. So when we think of a risk, we think, well, okay, are there a, a set of outcomes? What are those outcomes? Is it the broad, are they narrow? Uh, do we know what the outcomes are? You know, we, if we have disasters, natural disasters, could it be an earthquake? In many parts of the world, you have tornadoes, uh, cy uh, cyclones that uh, impact upon business. What are the outcomes there? Should you identify and try and manage those? Well, clearly, if you're a company that's operating in the American Gulf, and you have hurricanes every single year, then you should be trying to 
identify and manage the risks and uh, deal with them. There's also the probability of risk that you need to consider. Um, are the risks easy to predict? Well, if it's a, a tornado, then uh, you know they come every single year at the same time in the year, so you can predict them. But what you can't do is you can't predict the outcome from the tornado. You know, we've had absolute disasters like Hurricane Katrina. And then you have other tornadoes that pass by without any impact. So companies have to consider those. And then you have the nature of the risk. You know, is it a quantitative risk? So if you're doing business internationally and you can quantify the, the, the sales that may go up or down because of a particular risk, you can measure that. You can measure commodity risk, that's the price of gold, the price of oil. So if you're using oil, you can manage and measure uh, and model the changes in oil price um, and be able to work with that. But there's a lot of other risks that are qualitative risks that you can't actually measure or you can't measure with any degree of certainty. And uh, you know, one is uh, environmental risk. How do we measure that? Reputational risk, how do you measure that? You could come up with proxies, but there are probably a number of proxies that you need to, that, that would be equally valid in this case. So if you're a manager and you're running a business, then you need to be able to work with risk. And a very good method of doing that is uh, to use a risk matrix, uh, impact matrix. And what you do, it's just a two by two matrix. Uh, you have on one side the probability that an event will, will occur or a risk factor will manifest itself. And then on the other dimension you have its impact. And you can split that into high and low probability, high and low impact. So if we can take the, the four different uh, sections here. So if you've got an event where there's a very low probability that event will occur and in actual fact when it does occur it doesn't actually have much of an effect on the company, you actually just leave that alone. Uh, you just ignore it. You don't need to bother with it. Basically, the cost involved of managing and measuring that risk factor is, is much more than the impact it would have in the company if something happened. We can look at the, another case where you have a high probability that events occur, but low impact. And now, that might be low-level fraud. Um, or it might be inefficiencies or breakdowns in uh, the quality control. That it might just be, you know, employees not being at their desk all the time. Small things. You know, clearly, if this is happening all the time, you need to deal with it. But you put controls in place to make sure that the you know the events or the risk doesn't become a problem, and it doesn't move towards the high impact side of that matrix because if you've got a high probability of something happening and the the risk factor has a high impact on your business then clearly you have to treat that as a priority for action and and that is what managers do managers look at risk and they they allocate them into these four you know broad categories the one that i haven't mentioned is the the low probability high impact that could be an earthquake in, in parts of the world. Uh, you know, if you take a, an example of San Francisco, you know, we know that it's prone to earthquakes. We know that they occur every 100 years. Ma a major one occurs every 100 years. There's a low probability that any one time an earthquake will take place, but when it does, it's going to have a high impact. So what would you do? Well, businesses and regulators have actually put in place um, you know, controls, regulations for types of buildings that, uh, you know, must be constructed that are earthquake proof. But they also have contingency plans. And contingency plans are those plans uh, that are implemented when the event actually takes place so that you're managing the risk. You can't avoid risk. So it's being able to deal with that risk and not just uh, close your eyes and just hope it never occurs. So if we want to think about all the different risks that a business uh, faces, you can, you, know, you can put it into a kind of broad, generic type of diagram like this, where 
you know, you, you've got the business model of the company, what the company actually does, and uh, the company operates in society. And so in society, you have all these external factors that, that put pressures onto your business model. You've got social factors. Uh, you know, you've you've got the, you know, the the people that you're dealing with, uh, their work ethic, uh, their you know their approach to doing business. Um, you know, culture is very heterogeneous across the whole world, and you know types of approaches and a society is very different in the Middle East than it is from the, the Southeast Asia as it is from even within different parts of Europe. Uh, Scandinavia has a, a quite a different culture from uh, Southern Europe uh, uh, for an example. You also have the physical resources. In many parts of the world uh, the physical resources are very scarce and in other parts of the world they're um, ubiquitous so if you, you need water then you run, you run a business in Scotland. Uh, you don't run a business uh, that requires water in a place where it's drought uh, prone. And then you have the political climate. You know, how, how do the politics impact upon your business? If you take an example of uh, uh, the Repsol, a big Spanish company doing business in Argentina. And last year Argentina just came in and took the whole, uh, the whole company and made it publicly owned. You know, and you know that's working within politics, and working within the political climate uh, that companies can't avoid. Even in the UK, uh, you have the political pressure that's put on companies at the moment to pay tax, and to pay an appropriate amount of tax. Um, and and this will impact upon uh, all companies uh, as more and more governments are are trying to draw in uh, tax revenues. Clearly, they're going to put pressure on companies to make sure that an appropriate amount of tax is paid. So, if we look at go through the business risks, uh, and we go through fairly quickly uh, these risks. Uh, you know, as you you study your business degree, you're going to clearly appreciate these a lot more and and study these in a lot more depth. But you can look at all of these different factors here. So, you you know, if if you you look at the an economic environment, so you have credit risk market risk, liquidity risk, these are all risks that are associated with the economy. Um, we have something called systemic risk. Systemic risk is a risk that something completely unrelated to your business uh, has an impact on your business. So for example, if um, a, a plane crashes, you know, would that have an impact on, on your business? If, if you're a tourist business, then it may do, it may do, it might, you know, People might lose confidence in a particular type of technology, and that has an impact on, on what you do. Uh, if you look under physical resources, you see that there are environmental risks, there's techno technological risks, and then in, under the political climate, you've got country risks, political risks, legal risks, and accounting risks. And we can then go through to social risks, uh, governance, corporate governance, uh, reputation, we have business risks, we have industry risks. So there are all these different risks that we have to face. And as you can see from these slides, under market risk, it's interest rates. So the impact that interest rates have on the value of your company. If interest rates go up, how does that affect the value of your company? What happens if they go down? We've got commodity risk. A lot of companies rely on oil as a major um, input into their business. So what happens if the oil price goes up? Does that have an impact on the value of your company? If you're a multinational, you will be dealing in lots of different currencies, so you'll be exposed to foreign exchange risk. And if you're a bank or a financial institution, you may have equity risk. These are all what we'd call market risk. Credit risk is the risk that a counterparty that, that you deal with won't pay uh, what they owe you. And every company deals in something called trade credit. And trade credit is like short-term financing. It's basically, I'll sell you goods and you can pay me back in, within three months. What happens if they don't pay you back? How, you know, can you, you know, how do you approach that? Liquidity risk is the risk that you run out of cash. Every company faces this. They have to manage the cash. And they have to make sure that there's enough cash there to pay all their bills. Otherwise, the company may get into financial distress. 
Operational risk. Operational risk is, uh, looks at the, the operations of the company and the risks that the company face. It's up to the management of a company to make sure that their operations are as efficient as possible. And by operations, we mean a number of things. We mean the people, are they trained properly? Do they have the right ethos, the right culture? We talk about the processes, the business processes. How are decisions made within companies? We talk about the infrastructure, the actual property, the plant, the equipment that a business uses. Is that fit for purpose? And then we talk about the technology. Is, has the company got an appropriate level of technology to run its business operations efficiently and properly? Finally, there's always the danger of fraudulent activities. And a company has to make sure that those are managed. And you get different parts of the world, these risks may become greater or lesser. It's up to the managers to deal with that. We have legal regulatory risk. This is becoming more and more important, uh, particularly in certain industries. Uh, I would say the banking sector is uh, a, really, uh, a, a really big industry that's been affected by regulation at the moment. The risk that you don't comply with the regulations, this could be quality control, it may be emissions, it may be greenhouse gases, it may be to do with equality laws. All of these have to be dealt with within a company. We spoke already about reputational risk. The risk that what you do affects your reputation, which will affect the value of your company. And finally, as a, a, a kind of summary of the risks that, that we look at, risks are interconnected. So I've got a diagram here that has credit risk, the risk that a counterparty won't pay, market risk, the risk that increases or decreases in interest rates, foreign exchange, uh, commodities and governance as a governance risk, the risk that the way that you actually make decisions in a company affects the value of the company. These can all be interconnected so risks don't just sit on their own, they're correlated with each other and as a manager you have to be able to model that type of risk. So how do you do it? How do you manage risk in business? Well, there's a three-stage plan uh, or a three-stage process that you need to follow. The first stage is identify those risks. I would suggest that, you know, in a, in a company you get the senior management down, you get the departmental leaders to sit down and actually just brainstorm what are the major risks that your company faces. Once you've actually come up with a, a representative group of important risks, the next thing you ask is, well, how do we measure that risk? How do we actually, you know, kind of find a value of that risk. That allows us to work out the exposure that our company has to that risk. And then once we've, we know how exposed we are to the risk, we then have to put in place plans to manage that risk. And that's the key thing. Management of risks. I've used an example here in the banking sector, but this can actually apply to any particular sector. If you're running a company, you deal with risk. But you can't, you know, you, you know, you could argue that, well, if you want, you don't want any risk at all. In fact, you want to run a business that has virtually no risk. It's completely risk-free. Well, if it's risk-free, where's the value come in? If you are running a business that's completely risk-free, you're not going to generate any value. Because you need to take on risk. You could argue that, well, okay, let's just forget about risk. Let's just do our business. Let's just take on risks because then we're going to get the highest possible return. You know, we want to maximise the return, so we're going to take all these extra risks. Well, clearly that's irresponsible. You know, eventually something bad is going to happen to you and you'll be exposed. So you have to find somewhere in between. You have to try and minimise the downside risk the risk that bad things happen to you, and you try and maximise the upside risk, the risk that good things happen to you. And that's the key to managing businesses. It's a key to managing risk in businesses, being able to identify that, and being able to set in place processes that will allow you to efficiently run your business that is optimised for risk.